showing you a really cool looking card trick, and this is what it looks like. So as a magician, one of my favorite things to do is predict the future. Now a lot of the times people associate these predictions with just impossible magic, like there's no way the magician could know what I was going to do. But a lot of the times people forget that predictions are in everyday life and they're very common, commonly found in nature. And the best example I can tell you is weather, for example. Meteorologists, they can you know, predict the past, they can use those patterns of the weather, and they can use that to predict the future with weeks, months in advance, and they're very, very accurate most of the time. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you today with a deck of cards. So over here, I have a prediction that I'm not going to switch or anything. I'm just going to leave it here in full view the entire time. So with this deck of cards here, I'm gonna show you something really cool where if I shuffle the cards right here, I can have you shuffle as well. And if I take this deck of 52 cards here, I'll spread it out. If I was going to just pull out any two cards right now, there are three possibilities at what these two cards can make up. The first possibility is they're both red. The second is they're both black. And the third is one is red and, and the other is black. So let's see what I got right now. So right now I pulled out one black and one red. And of course, I'm not trying to pull out a certain pair of cards. I'm just trying to pull out a random amount or a random pair. I'm not trying to pull out any specific thing because I'm just going through and pulling out two random cards every single time. But of course, if I keep doing this long enough, hopefully I'll be able to get the other types. I just want to be able to show you that it does happen. Okay, this is a little interesting. Okay, here we go. So right here, there are two reds that I've just found randomly. Here, another two reds. Here's another mismatching. But as you guys can see that this is, this is completely random. There's no way that this is like forced um, or anything like that. Because what I, I want you guys to understand this because what I'm gonna have you do in a minute is exactly this. I want you to just go through the cards like this. I'm gonna spread out the cards and I just want you to go through and pull out random pairs of cards. Then what we'll do is read my prediction and see what my prediction says. So we'll just go ahead, we'll mix these cards back up in here because I want this to be random. And one more thing I wanna do is I actually don't want to be using the whole deck of cards because if we use the whole deck, there's obviously going to be you know an equal amount of red and black cards there in the deck. So what I want you to do is I want you to get rid of a completely random amount of cards. And we're gonna do this by just dealing through the cards like this, and you can go ahead and just say stop whenever you like, okay? Stop right there, you're sure? You want one more? Oh, you, okay, you want one more? Okay, that's fine. You're happy with that? Okay, great. Okay, we'll get rid of these cards, and that way, now we have a, just a random amount of cards that we're going to deal with here. And you can go ahead and shuffle these as much as you like. So go ahead, shuffle these up, make sure they're random. And when you're ready, we're going to start the selection process. So there are three options, like I said. There's both black, both red, and then the mismatching, red and black. So if they're both black, place them here. If they're mismatching, place them here. And if they're both red, place them here, okay? And I'll speed the video up um, so you guys don't have to watch me do this, but keep in mind the spectator is doing this completely by themselves. And also one, one more thing I should mention is if they, for some reason, don't like a pair, for example, this one here, if they see both red, no, I don't want both red. I wanna change that to a red and a black. They have the option to do that. So keep that in mind, okay? And now I'll begin. Okay, so I finished splitting the cards up just like this. As you guys can see here, we have the red pile here, the black pile here. I think I accidentally put them in the wrong spot. I meant to put the red cards here and the black cards here, but that doesn't really matter. And you guys can see we have the mismatching cards here as well. So let's go ahead and check out my prediction. And remember, you guys did all this yourselves. I wasn't influencing your decision or anything like that. But for the first time, let's go ahead and open this sealed envelope and let's go ahead and check out my prediction. I think, yes, right over here. So I should let you know, I actually made three predictions and I'll read them off to you one at a time. So the first prediction I said, I said, the pair that you will choose the most will be mismatching. So that means these cards over here. So not the black cards, not the red cards, but the mismatching cards. And as you guys can clearly see, that prediction is correct. 
And yeah, that's pretty cool. But of course I could have, you know, just been using, you know, logic on that um, because it's probably the most likely pair that you would choose if you're just pulling out random cards. Um, so that's impressive, but not that impressive. So how do we take this up to another level? Let's read my next prediction here. See, the next prediction I wrote is on this side of the paper. I said, you will choose more red cards than black cards. As you guys can see here, these are all the red cards and these are all the black cards. And as you can clearly see, you've chosen more red cards than black cards. And remember, you had a completely free choice to pull out whatever cards you wanted. So there's just no way I could have known that you would have chosen more red than black. So that's pretty impressive. But remember, I told you I made three predictions. The last one I made should hopefully shock you. The last prediction, it's connected to this one. You will choose more red cards than black cards by exactly four. Now, there's just no way that I could have known that you would do this, but let's go ahead and check. The red cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four black cards here. So I knew that you would choose exactly four more red cards than black cards. Now that is pretty impossible. So yeah, that is the trick, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, be sure to stick around for the tutorial. All right, guys. So here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So this is a really great card trick because it's super easy. There's barely any sleight of hand. There's actually like pretty much no sleight of hand in this trick and it's pretty much entirely self-working. So the only thing you need is a deck of 52 cards. You want 26 red and 26 black. And also you're going to want a piece of paper with those three predictions written on it. And if you wanna know what those predictions are, just go back to the performance and just copy down what I wrote on those papers. So there is a little bit of a setup if you guys wanna do the really easy version and you don't really wanna worry about anything. The setup for this trick is just take four black cards and put them away. Just put these four black cards away in your pocket. And these can be any four black cards. And the spectator is not really gonna notice that there's four cards missing. Like they're, they're just gonna see a deck of cards. So what you can do is you can shuffle the cards and you're gonna be telling the spectators all about your predictions in nature. And now you're gonna explain to them this really cool idea where you pull out two cards and there's three possibilities. They're either both red, they're both black, or one is red and one is black. So let's see what I got here. Here I have a red and a black. So what you're doing now is you're actually sort of setting up the deck in front of the spectator's eyes. And you're just gonna be pulling out random pairs of cards. You're not trying to pull out any specific pair, but what you're trying to do is you are just trying to build up this middle pile here of mismatching cards to about, I don't know, 15 or 20 cards in it. If you have that, then you're pretty much ready to go for the next part of the trick. So you're just gonna be pulling out random pairs here. And if they're both red, just place them here. If they're both black, just place them here. It doesn't really matter which ones you get. And the thing that you can say during this part, if you don't know what to say, is you can just say, look, I'm just pulling out random cards here. And there's a pretty equal chance of pulling out all of these cards because I'm just going in and I'm pulling out random cards. And also these cards are completely shuffled as well. So there's just no way that I can predict what cards are going to be pulled out. And you wanna emphasize the fact that you don't know which cards they're going to pull out. That's like the main part of this trick that makes it sound impossible is that you don't know which cards they're going to pull out when in reality, it's all based on that principle because all the cards that they pull out, it's basically just going to eliminate all their future options because right now, the deck is pretty much set. If I keep going through all these cards right now, I'll show you guys how this trick works. So basically, if I was going to finish this, and you don't have to finish it for this part of the trick, but I'm just doing this as an example for the tutorial, the prediction will always be true because since you took out those four black cards, right now, I've just pulled out the most of the mismatching cards just because that's completely natural. And also, if I was going to count these red cards right now, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's going to be a different number every time, but I have 12 here. That should mean I actually have eight here because I should have four less black cards than red cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So as you can see, it doesn't matter which cards I pull out, the outcome is going to be the exact same every single time. But when you're telling the spectator about this trick, you want to emphasize the fact that you don't know which cards they're going to pull out because that makes it sound really impossible when in reality, the outcome is already determined. So you don't actually have to go through the whole deck when you're doing this first part. Just pretend like there are some cards here that I haven't done yet. Let's just say I'm in this position here. So I've done a couple of cards here and now this middle pile is really stacked. Like there's a huge amount of cards in here and that's perfect. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna take these red and black cards, just kind of shuffle them together, it doesn't really matter, and just shuffle these with the rest of the deck. And now I'm just gonna be placing these cards on top of these mismatching cards and I'm just gonna throw them on top like this to make it completely random. So once I do this, what I've actually done is I've set up the entire first half of the deck to go in sort of a Gilbreth principle style thing. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means every pair of cards will be mismatching. So you can see we have red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, black, red, red, black, black, red. So every pair of cards will be mismatching cards. And that's exactly what you want. When you tell the spectator that you want them to remove a random amount of cards, you're just gonna be dealing cards down. And there's two ways you can go about this. You can either deal the cards out singly and just hope that they say stop at an even number. Or if you don't wanna to have to worry about that, you can deal the cards in groups of two. And that way they can truly say stop whenever they want, as long as it's somewhere above the first half of the deck. In the performance, I just did singly, and I was basically just hoping that the spectator would say stop at an even number, and I'm just secretly counting one, two, three, four, five, six in my head. So here I've done six, and then seven, eight, nine. If they say stop here at nine, that's not good because I need to add on an extra card for it to be even. I need to make sure there's an even amount of cards in here. That way, the trick will work for the rest of the deck. So if they say nine, I'll say, okay, that's fine. What I can do is I can do a one-handed top palm like this as I slide these cards over. And that way I've secretly added the 10th card on here without them seeing. And now there's an even amount of cards in this pile and that's perfect because now that means that there will be an even amount of cards in this deck. So as long as there's an even amount of cards in this deck, then your prediction will always be true. And of course, when they're saying stop, you just wanna make sure that they say stop somewhere above the first half of the deck. That's why you wanna build up that middle pile as much as possible. And that way you have a lot of headroom for them to say stop. So once they've gotten rid of a random amount of cards, now the rest of the trick is completely self-working. So you take the rest of the cards and you give them a shuffle and you give them to the spectator and they're gonna shuffle them up. You're gonna take the cards back and spread them out on the table and all you're gonna have them do is pull out the pairs of cards. If they're black, put them here. Mismatching, put them here. And if they're red, put them here. So you're gonna let them do this and just let them start out by taking random cards like this and let them put them down. Just make sure they do about, I don't know, five or six pairs at first. But when they get to about this point over here, you're actually going to ring in this little idea and you're gonna tell them that, for example, if they pull out a pair like this and they don't like it, let's say I actually want these to be two blacks, I can actually change it for the pair that I want. So I'm gonna find another black card here and I'm gonna set that down. And that's completely allowed as long as you've put down some cards beforehand. And also, you don't wanna have them do that every single time, you can say. So whenever you want, you can take one of the pairs and change it for whichever one you like. And that way, they'll only do one pair and they're not gonna change every single time now. So yeah, they're just gonna go through completely randomly here, random cards, and they're just going to be dispersing them into their respective piles like this. So right here, I have pulled out the cards. And as you guys can see, the prediction should pretty much be true already. So as you guys can see here, um, the middle pile is pretty massive and that is accurate. That's what I wrote in the prediction. So that's gonna be true. The red pile is going to have a random amount, but it's going to always have four more than the black card. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that means this should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It works every single time. So yeah, that right there is basically how the trick works and I'll let you guys take it from here. So yeah, you guys can write down your prediction and then you can reveal it to the spectator however you like. But yeah, I think this is a really cool idea that you guys can maybe make your own tricks off of as well. If you don't like this exact version, you guys can come up with your own version. But I really like this version. I think it's a pretty cool mentalism trick. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys next time. Bye.